Yanina Fialkovska came to us for the first time in September 74, and now she is with us again as a jury member of the Rubinstein competition. Shalom, Yanina. Shalom, Arik. What happened in 74? <laughs> What happened in 74 was actually the very beginning of my career. I can base the very beginning of my career right at that time. It was the first Rubinstein International Piano Competition. The first Rubinstein the International first. Piano Competition. Yes. yes. Uh, do you remember who were the jury members? It was impressive. Yeah. <laughs> it was, of course, uh, Rubinstein himself was chairman. But then we had Benedetti Michelangeli, we had Guido Agosti, we had Jacques Février, we had uh, Eugene Istomin, Sasha uh, Tansman. Are, are you talking about reality yeah, or I history? Know. Incredible, incredible. Yeah. And, you know, and they all came? Everybody came, even, and, even Michelangeli. And, yeah, and he never cancelled because <laughs> yeah, he would yeah. not let down Rubinstein. No, he would not let down Rubinstein. And um, we... In the public, I remember, I was not involved with Rubinstein competition in those years. And I remember, oh, this Polish girl, Janina Fialkowska, sounds very Polish to us. And then, all of a sudden, we realized that, I, and we asked ourselves, can she speak English at all? And then we realized that she speaks English much better than all of us together. How well, come? Because I'm actually Canadian-born. I'm born in Montreal. So my, my languages are French and English. With very little, po my father's Polish, of course. But your English is proper English, not American. <laughs> that is. Ah, uh, but that's in very interesting. A little, it's a type of English that's dying out. It's the Anglo Quebec English, very mid Atlantic. There used to be a lot of English Canadians living in the province of Quebec. There are very few now. It's a mainly French province. A about 50,000 people left so who can speak this dialect? Or? Yes, or something like that. And they all live in, in Ontario and Toronto. Sounds very snobbish. Oh, I <laughs> yes. hope not. I, hope, I just hope it, it sounds clear, that's all. <laughs> um, and then in this competition, mm -hmm. there was a miracle. Maybe you tell us about that miracle. Well, the miracle was that I actually was a law student at that time at the University of Montreal. I had just started my law studies, but Radio Canada said, Janina, we want you to represent the country. Go to this wonderful new competition. So I did with no expectations except the great, great hope in my heart that I would be able to shake the hands of my idol, who was Arthur Rubinstein. Fair enough. Fair enough. And what happened was that, no, I did not win. The wonderful Emmanuel Axe won. He's still my best friend. And, but Rubinstein found something in me that he liked very much. And so he sought me out afterwards and asked me, well, where do you play? And I said, well, I actually have never played a professional concert in my life. If that wasn't true, I'd played one. But, um, and he said, well, this is crazy. I said, no, I'm going to law school. And he said, no. <laughs> and the rest is history. <laughs> and you won the best prize of the competition. And that prize was the love of the maestro. I was, I was extraordinarily lucky. I, I mean, it, it, he completely changed my life. But whether he helped my career or not, or any of those things, just to have met the man was something really, I mean, one of the very special things in my life. I would like to ask you to play for us uh, Mazurka by Chopin. Mm -hmm. Why Mazurka? You can guess. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's really Polish. Really Polish. <laughs> and really Rubinstein. <laughs> and you have a Polish name, yeah. and we love Chopin. Yeah. And Rubinstein could play some Mazurkas, not too bad. Not too badly, no.
dziękuję bardzo. Proszę ja bardzo, nie, nie. proszę bardzo. Ja. By the way, do you speak Polish at all? Just a little bit. Huh? Just oh. a little bit. To justify the name Janina Fialkowska, I'm sure that any time you are in Poland, they speak to you Polish. Absolutely, I know how to bluff very well. <laughs> Yes. Anyway, you played it marvelously. And uh, today we love a photo gallery. So oh. why don't we look at Janina's photo gallery? Mm -hmm. And the first one is, I can see a photo of Janina with the very long hair. This yes. was the last year with long hair? Or? No, no, I kept it for a few more years. <laughs> and you were... Uh, uh, I was getting a prize. I was getting a prize um, for our national competition in Canada from Queen Mum. That's our present Queen of Canada, who is Queen Elizabeth II, her mother. And you were like uh, 10 years old here? or 11, 11, <laughs> 11, 11, 11, 11. Years old. Okay, and now it's uh, another beautiful photo, uh, the man with a straw hat. Uh, what's his name? His name is Arthur Rubenstein. And uh, I, I can see a very interesting background. You are in a ski vacation or <laughs> what, what is it? What we Canadian are? Lodge. <laughs> and actually, you're far off. We're in Marbella in Spain. Okay. <laughs> and we're at, right outside his studio and uh, after lunch. But it looks like vacation. It was, it was a vacation <laughs> for him. I had to play for him, so it wasn't quite a vacation for me. Uh, I can see in the next uh, photo that you really played for him. Yes. That was the very first time I saw him after the competition. You know, during the competition, he was so nice to me and so encouraging, but I never expected that such a man would actually want to see me again. But a few months later, he, he called me, he telephoned me, found my phone number and said, I'm coming to New York, come and play for me. And this, that was in his hotel room in New York. This was in his hotel, hotel room in New York. And that was the first time. And I was terribly nervous. <laughs> um, uh, in the next photo, yes. I see another good friend whose first name is Isaac. Yes. Yes, uh, it was very funny. And there's also the French pianist between myself and Isaac is François-René Duchable. Ah, Duchable and yeah. Isaac Stern, Stern right. as a young man. Yes, and that was very funny because whenever he would turn up in Paris, we would see him coming through the window and Arthur would say, Oh, quick, hide, Isaac is coming, he wants something. <laughs> I see, yeah, 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 yeah. And who could say no to Isaac? To Only me? Arthur Rubenstein, uh, nobody else. <laughs> oh, that, that photo I love. Yeah, this I love is this published in every brochure, yeah. in every program yeah. book of the Rubenstein yeah. competition. Yeah. Rubenstein in the middle yeah. and on one side. It's Emmanuel, Seta Taniel, and Eugene Injik. And the nice part is I've remained really good friends with all of them. And the two girls? Me. Me and Seta Taniel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, holding his hands? Yes. Do I see right? You see absolutely right. Okay. Yes. Do we have another picture? Do oh. you know what he's telling me there? He's scolding. No, he's telling me something very serious. Don't get married yet. Uh, <laughs> that is what he said. <laughs> and, and you are smiling. Well, I was smiling. I actually took his advice and only got married, I don't know, about I 20 years it. later. I like this thing. <laughs> yes, very serious. <laughs> How old you were, by the way? I was 23. Yeah. And you didn't get married? Not for 26 years. And then I got very happily married. <laughs> Janina, I would like to ask you to play another mazurka. Sure. Not before asking you this uh, interesting question for me. Mm -hmm. As a Canadian girl, of course, you went to Paris. I Obviously, did. you yes. have to study in Paris. Absolutely. And you had a, mm -hmm. a French piano teacher. Yes, I did. What was her, her name? In, in, in Canada, it was Yvonne Hubert. Uh -huh. And she's the one that taught all the Canadians. Louis Lorty, Marc-André Hamelin, André Lafont, mm -hmm. all of us. Um, then I went to e another Yvonne, but Yvonne Le Fébure, another pupil of Courtauld. So I was steeped in the Courtauld school for the first 20 years. And then in Juilliard, you're the Russian teacher. I did, Sasha Gorenitsky. Of though. course. Yes. And later on, you had a mentor by the name of Art Rubinstein. So actually, you know the three major schools of Chopin playing. I the do. French, yes. the Russian, and the 
universal. <laughs> I wanted to say the Jewish. <laughs> you can say the Jewish, but you can say the Jewish Polish. Because, you. you know, we Poles like to have Arthur ah, to yes. ourselves as well. <laughs> we Poles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we Poles. Yes. The, the Polish pride. Yes, oh, absolutely. So speaking of the Polish pride, why not another mazurka of the real Polish pride? Okay. Many thanks to you, Janina. I'm still moved by your Polish glamour and uh, expression and intimate feeling of the mazurkas. Thank you. Uh, we mentioned the French school, yes. the Russian school, mm -hmm. and you said the universal school yes. of Chopin playing. And I would like kindly to ask you if you can demonstrate to us some difference. Uh, take a phrase and play it in a French perfumed way it's or... It's difficult to do, but um, I think I'll take a, a, a beginning of a prelude. And um, you see, in the French, uh, emphasis is more on the passion and the line and, and, and the refinement of the Chopin. It's less on the rhythm. So um, when they do this, for example, Nice pedal. It flows, it's lovely, there's pedal. 
um, with the Russian school, now, and this is, I'm generalizing <laughs> yes, horribly here, I and know, I will I probably know. get all sorts of yes, comments from people. I, I know generalizing is, is very forbidden, scary. but if we don't do it, we don't say yeah. some very important truth. Think? For me, the Russian school means beautiful sound, but always beautiful sound. So, in fact, it's richer and, and, and maybe uh, warmer than the French sound, but probably maybe a little bit less varied i don't know but anyway it's more more like that i have a very difficult question yes which style is more self-centered oh no i can't say that <laughs> Can you imagine my career would be over? <laughs> no, I don't think either is. Because with a very good pianist, it's never self-centered. I think that's the difference between the good pianist and the not so good. And speaking of a good pianist, well, how Rubinstein well, will play that? Rubinstein, what he did, which is so extraordinary, is he articulated the notes in the melody. He also had an extraordinary sense of rhythm always. And what he captured was the Polish feeling of nobility. We're snobs, the Poles. We always think we're aristocrats. You say we. Well, you know, right now it serves me to be Polish. So, <laughs> anyway, Rubinstein would be... Every note. The every, you see the da 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 when others would go there did a little long. And I noticed that when you imitated Rubinstein, you also sit very straight. <laughs> yeah, sit very yeah. straight. This is a kind of observation that's uh, yes. I... It's that reserve that Chopin, as a man, had. It's not the self-indulgent all over the keyboard. And it is from the inside and from the outside at the same time. Exactly. It, it gives it an it gives an impression of nobility, or aristocracy. And, but great warmth inside. I remember in 74, I heard your Liszt sonata. Yeah. That was incredible. You were so passionate and so crazy, yeah. a crazy Canadian girl. <laughs> and I uh, heard that you uh, actually discovered uh, concerto number no. three by Liszt. Well, the thing was that a, a young doctoral student discovered it in Chicago, Chicago, and I couldn't believe it. Of all places. Of all places. Well, where he discovered it was in Leningrad, in, in sort of archives all over, the, after 89, when the wall came down, and everybody had access to these. And he put it together and quietly went to the Chicago Symphony and said, I've discovered a Liszt concerto. Well, of course, then everybody wanted to play this. But I, luckily, the year before, I had just played the 12 Transcendental Etudes in Chicago. Scholte knew me, he gave his blessing, I played the premiere. It was wonderful. It was very exciting. And I believe that after the concerto number three by Liszt, I may dare to ask you to play another mazurka. Okay, you may.
Yanina, merci beaucoup. That was fascinating. And you have to promise me next time you are in Israel, we are going to film another intermezzo show about Liszt. Is it a deal? It's an absolute deal. Thank you, Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank Shalom. you. Thank you.